It all started with the New York Times snowfall in 2012. And by now, we've all seen them. Beautiful, long-form web stories that defy convention and inspire the imagination. Stories that range in topic from financial journalism to baseball legend, in-depth profiles of musical icons to historical tragedies, as well as personal stories, fiction, and daring experiments in medium-bending narrative. A few short years ago, stories like these were impossible to create without the direct involvement of advanced developers. But thanks to tools like Divi, any WordPress user can now, technically speaking, pull these modern feats of storytelling off. So why don't we see more of them coming out of the WordPress and Divi community? Well, I think the simplest answer is that storytelling is hard. It's sort of like dancing in that we can all do it, but that doesn't mean that we're any good at it. And it certainly doesn't mean we've mastered the finer points of specific dance styles. The same is true of storytelling. By default, we are all storytellers. But to create a great or even good long-form story using WordPress and Divi requires that we understand the finer points of storycraft across a wide variety of mediums, including written text, images, video, web animation, and anything else you might want to include. All of which, in the end, must be brought together under the umbrella of the ideas and principles of storytelling design. The simple truth is that the required time and dedication to storycraft required to become good at telling these types of stories is often more than most people are willing to commit to. But for those of you who are willing to learn, we've created this segment to set you on the right path. I'll be sharing with you a recommended production process and some of what I consider to be essential storytelling tools and resources for crafting beautifully customized long-form stories that any major publication would be happy to publish. It may surprise many of you that before you even begin to build your story with Divi, there are at least five other stages of development that your story needs to go through. They are writing, mood boarding and concept art, scripting, and I'll explain in a second why I've uh, separated that out from writing, storyboarding and story mock-up, and creation of final design elements. Only after all of these stages of production are complete are you actually ready to build your story with WordPress and Divi. And if this sounds time consuming, that's because it is. I mean, Divi might take care of the developmental heavy lifting, but creating the content itself is not an insignificant undertaking. However, this process, as time consuming as it may be, is the most direct path to creating a truly great long form web story that I'm aware of. That's why for the remainder of this segment, I'm going to describe each stage of production individually and the tools and resources that will help you master them. Let's dive in. First things first, you need to write your story. And as it turns out, neither the Divi Builder or WordPress's editor are particularly good places to write long form content. Your best bet is to draft your story in an application specifically built for writing. On the free slash cheap end of things, you could use Google Docs for this or Pages slash Word if you prefer, but my personal favorite is an affordable writing software called Scrivener. Scrivener is for serious writing projects. It includes some powerful features like a document bin for organizing your manuscript and accompanying documents, including research, ideas, notes, and more. It also has outlining tools, a corkboard note card view, pre-formatted script and document templates, vertical and horizontal split screen modes, full screen writing mode, and a ton of other useful features. A program like Scrivener is ideal for writing a long form web story because within a story as potentially media rich as is possible on the web, you may have standard paragraphs of text followed by a video script, followed by panel descriptions and dialogue for comic book style sections, followed by an audio embed, and the list of possibilities goes on. Scrivener allows you to plan, create, and organize all of those written elements in a single project. This is important because the writing process doesn't end at step one. It evolves with each step until you have a final script that you can build each section and module from with Divi. So what exactly should you be writing in step one? I'd recommend writing three things in whatever order that you prefer. One, a story treatment. This is a straightforward prose summary of your story. It should probably be no longer than five pages for your own convenience. Two, a detailed outline that includes all plot points and scene descriptions. This can be as long as you need it to be. Three, character and setting descriptions. It's okay if these descriptions are a little vague at this stage because what they're really meant to do is help guide you in step two where you're gonna refine um, those aesthetics. If you have absolutely no idea where to start when it comes to writing a story, I'd like to recommend two books to you. The Writer's Journey by Christopher Booker 
and Story by Robert McKee. Both of these books are highly recommended to script writers, which, as you'll see later, is exactly what you're writing. Stage two of the production process is mood boarding and concept art. This is where you want to gather and create all of the visual inspiration that you'll need in order to help describe the graphics during the scripting process, as well as reference during storyboarding and the creation of final design elements. For those unfamiliar with the idea of a mood board, it's simply a collage or collection of related images and media that helps set the aesthetic tone of a project. You can use a wide variety of tools to create your mood board, from paper cutouts glued to a foam board, to Photoshop, to a dedicated Tumblr blog, to Pinterest, and I'm sure there's a lot more. My two personal favorites are Tumblr and Pinterest. I like Tumblr because I can theme the blog itself to match the mood, as well as play various types of media without leaving the mood board. Pinterest is nice because you can not only set your board to private, but all of the Pinterest functions are inherently geared around the idea or concept of mood boarding in the first place, so it's a really natural fit. Depending on your project and preferences, you might want to create several separate mood boards for different characters, settings, web design elements, etc. When you've finished, it's time to script. By the time you get to the scripting stage, you should know what your story is from start to finish. You have an outline that tells you how many scenes or sections you're going to write, and you've got a lot of visual references for everything from page navigation to character design to overall look and feel. Now it's time to head back into your writing application and not only write all of those scenes, but make important decisions about which medium each scene will be conveyed through, and scripting those sections of the story accordingly. You have to ask yourself questions like, is this part of the story best suited for video or the written word? Can I get away with just an image here? What about saying this in an animated GIF or video background? Should this section have audio? Where will I need custom coding? Etc. There are so many ways any given story can be told. With the kind of long-form storytelling that WordPress and Divi allows, the sheer volume of options can become dizzying. I can't make all of those decisions for you, but I can advise you on how to keep all of your ideas organized and formatted in such a way that they will make sense to you down the line and help guide the creation process. Here are a few concepts and guidelines I'd suggest adopting. There are two narrative languages that have the most direct influence on web-based long-form storytelling, the cinematic language of movies and the panel-based language of comics. From a scripting perspective, think of your entire story as an interactive, long-scrolling comic book. If you're using Scrivener or a similar program, you can use their graphic novel script template to guide you. When a specific scene or section calls for video, switch to a video scripting template. This will not only help you greatly during the next few stages of development, but this will not only help you greatly during the next few stages of development, but if you're working with a team, you will be able to hand off a video script to the people making the videos, a scene script to the artist slash designers creating page sections, and so on. When you're finished, your script should not only contain the detailed contents of each scene, such as prose and or dialogue, but also provide you with very specific instructions for how each part of the story should be told. In the next phase of production, you'll put those visual storytelling ideas to the test by storyboarding your videos and mocking up the page designs you've described in the script. In the storyboarding and story design mock-up stage, you will not only be working from your script to create sketches, mock-ups, and even prototypes, depending on your preferences, for each element of your story, but using these tests to refine your script and get every aspect of your story ready for final production. By the time you are done with this stage of the process, there should be little to no ambiguity as to what the story will look like when completed, and how each section will function within the Divi Builder. Like everything else in this process, it will take quite a bit of time to do properly, but in the end, it will remove a lot of guesswork, foster better collaboration, or simply make it possible in the first place, and result in a stronger final product. Now, if the theory behind what makes visual storytelling work is a mystery to you, or you just like to get better at it, I'd highly recommend checking out the book Understanding Comics by Scott McCloud. This book, in graphic novel form, is like a visual storytelling masterclass. Reading it is going to provide you with the principles you need in order to take full advantage of the Divi Builder's grid for storytelling. And best of all, it's incredibly accessible. The fifth stage of the production process is where you create all of the final design elements that you will then use inside of WordPress and Divi to construct your story. To make this process a bit faster and more efficient, I would recommend going through your script and making a master list of every element you will need to create along with its accompanying notes, then only referencing the full script if you have contextual questions. 
This will make it easier for you to get a sense of how far along you are on the total workload, as well as the ability to batch the creation of related elements together, or for that matter, give different design slash production tasks to different people or teams depending on the scale of the project. At the end of this production process, you should have everything you need in order to simply pull up your script on one side of your screen and the Divi Builder on the other side and plug in the final elements that tell your story. And that, Divi Nation, is how to plan and execute custom long-form content for building within WordPress and Divi. If you have any questions, please feel free to leave them in the comments section of the accompanying blog post for Divi Nation Episode 3 at elegantthemes.com blog, and I will happily help you out. Don't forget, if you're watching this video on YouTube or Facebook, take a moment to subscribe, follow, like, and or share. It really helps. Thanks.